Mm -hmm. Thanks, Data. Now, Martin Lewis is here with his expert advice, as usual. Now, we've had a lot of people getting in touch, as always, Martin, yes. but we wanted to start by asking you about the scams we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier. You've had your image used many, many times on fake ads. I mean, it's just hideous, isn't it? Well, it's one of the worst compliments I get that my face is apparently the most scam face in the UK. And uh, I, as many people know, I sued Facebook a number of years ago for a £3 million out-of-court settlement to set up Citizens I Buy Scam Action and a scam reporting button. But sadly, scams on Facebook and other social media are still absolutely rife. We have an epidemic and there are flaccid laws dealing with it at the moment. Now, we campaigned, I and many other people, to get scam adverts in the online safety bill, which has now gone through Parliament, and that gives Ofcom the regulator power to fine and come down hard on social media companies that have scam adverts. The problem is many people think that means anything they see now is legit. It isn't. The truth is the consultation process on dealing with those scam adverts is 12 to 18 months for deep fakes from now, before we see anything meaty put in place and another year before the scam adverts that are everywhere, ubiquitous, you know, pretty much most celebrity adverts you see online, certainly if they're for trading or Bitcoin or anything like that, are just scams. So what I would warn people is if you see an advert on social media, do not click it and go automatically. Go to a search engine and search something similar to see if it is legitimate. Do all the checks, and especially if it's investing, it's probably a con. And I need to be very, very plain. If you see an advert with me in it, it is a lie. I don't do adverts. I don't talk about investments. They're absolutely rife everywhere. I've seen some with Robert Peston now coming in them as well that are very similar. These Bitcoin code, Bitcoin trader type things, they are scams. They are lies. Sadly, I get people who've lost hundreds of thousands of pounds for them fighting them as hard as I can, but we need to have a little bit of scepticism. Social media is a wild west when it comes to advertising. Frankly, I'm tempted to say I wouldn't trust any adverts on there, don't click through them, which would actually hurt the social media companies and deny them income. And maybe if we started to deny them some income, they might start to put more resources into policing what affects so many vulnerable people, destroys lives, destroys people's mental health, destroys people's self-image, and is absolutely devastating far more than just the finances. Absolutely. Martin, you're so passionate about no, it, and we that. thank you for that. It's frustrating. It goes against everything Martin believes in. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're oh, literally yeah. here to help people 24-7, and you're seeing your face aligned with something that you just... Yeah. You know, it's if, not you. if it sounds too good to be true, Martin, it invariably Absolutely isn't that. true, is it? Yes. Be cautious, be careful, do your research, yeah. as always. Right, should we... Uh, especially in investment and diet pills, they're the two big ones to watch out yeah. for. Right. If they've got celebrities involved, they're generally, they're generally scam ads. All right, Absolutely. Martin, look, uh, thanks for being with us this morning. Thank uh, you. Jill's been in touch. She says, is my child entitled to a full university grant? I have an 18-year-old looking to go to university this September. My husband retired in 2021 and started getting the state pension in 2023. We have savings and an annuity pension of about £800 a year. I don't work for medical reasons and I don't get any state help. I was previously paid employment and support allowance, which stopped after my first year, but my national insurance contributions are still paid for. Will my child be entitled to a full grant as our income will be well below £25,000 a year? OK, to be honest, it was the last bit that gave me the answer. So, no, no, assuming you're in England, you will not be entitled to a full grant because there are no university grants in England. There are some partial grants in Scotland and Wales and Northern Ireland uh, where there's some grant and some loan. In the English financial system, you get a student loan. So it is a loan that is repaid by the student once they leave university if they earn enough. And so earning over 25,000 for students who start to go now. Um, will your child be entitled to the full loan? Yes. Uh, quite simply, the, the, what I call the parental contribution, the amount of living loan your child gets to go to university is means tested based on family income, which is a proxy for parental income. The parental contribution starts with total family income, £25,000 and above. The last four or five words of, the, of your message said income below £25,000. Therefore, your son should get the full loan. Make sure you fill out the means testing form or they won't. Uh, but it is a loan. It is not a grant. It is repayable once they leave university if they earn enough.
but they should get the full amount. So hopefully that will help them, enable them to go to university without you having to have money there to give them to live off. And of course, the tuition fee is also loaned. That is also repairable once you start earning enough, once you leave. Thank you, Martin, okay. and I hope that helps you, Jill, as well. Yes, OK, we've got Maggie next, who says, I wanted to know if now is the right time to go for a fixed interest savings account. The talk at the moment um, is of the bank rate coming down later in the year, so I'm wondering if this is the best time to go for a fixed term of two to three years. I am retired with a decent amount of savings and a substantial part of my income is interest on my savings. I would like the security of knowing what my income will be for several years. I also need monthly interest... Uh, rather than annual or on maturity? Certainly not a problem going for fixed rate savings now. It's worth noting the rate that you can fix that tends to depend on, uh, I'm very oversimplifying, how the city views long-term fixed interest, long-term interest rates. And you're right, the prediction is they're going to drop in the future. So we've seen fixed rates come off about one percentage point from where they were before. You can now fix at about five, five and a quarter percent uh, a few months ago, it was over 6%. But that is a pretty decent rate, about the same rate as easy access. And if UK interest rates do drop, which is the, what the markets think they will, but nobody knows, then easy access rates will drop. But if you lock in on a fix now, then you will get the rate that you lock in now for two to three years. So I'm actually going to reverse the question. I cannot tell you, I don't have a crystal ball, what will happen in the markets. But I can tell you that your logic for wanting to fix which is you get absolute surety of what you'll be paid, you know what you're going to earn in the future, and you can do that and lock the money away for two to three years is good. So your logic is right. A fix seems a good idea for you, and you can get fixed savings that pay monthly income. So while you can't access the capital, the amount you put away, the interest can be paid into another bank account so you can utilise the interest to live on. So it sounds like a pretty decent decision, but I'm doing that based on what you told me rather than predicting the future, because I can't. Thank you. I hope that helps, Maggie. OK, Martin, just a quickie. Um, Lauren says, what's the best savings account for our baby? We want to open a savings account for our baby who is currently five months old. Oh, Congratulations, yeah. Lauren. Uh, what's oh. the best type of account for them to open? Congratulations. Uh, if you're putting money away each month, you've got the Saffron Building Society in Halifax at paying 58 and 5.5% 5, 5 for monthly savings, so putting, say, up to 100 quid a month for them. If you want to put lump sums away, the Nationwide is the best children's savings account, paying the 5% flat on lump sum amounts. So those would be the places I would start to look, and I wish you huge congratulations. Can I say something that no new parent wants to hear from me? I always say this. It's, I'm the most depressing person in the world. I'm sorry. The other thing I always suggest new parents look at is something like level term life assurance, which, heaven forbid, one of the parents, or if you're a single parent, you were to lose your life which you look at making sure that money would be paid over the next 20 years while they're a dependent child to, to give them, uh, to, to supplement the lost income, your lost income, if you or, or your partner are working. It's worth, go and do some reading on it. But the other thing, people always ask about children's savings. They don't ask about level term life insurance. And there's one in 30 children will lose a parent um, before the age of 18, and I was one of those children, which is why I'm quite passionate about it, I think it is a sensible thing to go and do some reading and look at the same time, even though I know it's a bit of a downer at the moment to you say. You know what, you're so right. It's the conversations we don't have that we really should have. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it's absolutely. the one that we feel a bit awkward about. Oh, I don't want to go... And I'm that person, as we know. Yeah. I say this all the time. <laughs> I'm time. in a bubble. I'm in a uh, bubble. Martin, we should. even though it wasn't the happiest ending, but it, you're always great to you're have on so the show. You're so brilliant. And that makes us happy because you're helping us all. Yes. Right. Thank you so much, Thank Martin. You, Lovely Martin. to see you. Take care. Have a good day.